How exactly do you make your swabs, in particular the large swab? Do you make multiple passes with the Q-tip or just one? So um, yes, I have swabs. I don't actually have any on me because my swab book, um, Sarah is now keeping my swab book. I don't have it in my, uh, my office right now because she's, she's our photographer who does actually all the scans and color adjustments and stuff of the swabs. Um, and she's now helping to actually produce them too. I used to do all the swabs myself and after a while I was like, you know what, I can actually teach this to somebody else. <laughs> It was getting to the point where I like, wouldn't do a swab for a week and was like, all right, this really needs to get done. Okay, let me teach somebody else and then it can get done. So um, how we physically actually do the swab. So um, the swab is basically um, uh, done on a very specific paper that we have. It's Clairefontaine pollen cardstock, um, which is not something we have available for sale. So don't write it down. Don't ask me about it. It's um, something that is not easy to obtain, but it's something I started using five years ago when we first started doing swabs and I've had to kind of keep at it. So I've got a stockpile for myself for that personal reason, but um, so that we can keep doing swabs, but it's not something available. There's other cardstock type options out there, um, but it's a very thick 210 gram thick cardstock. Um, so it's, um, you know, cut them up into two by two and a quarter inch sizes. Don't ask me why it's that size. I just arbitrarily kind of chose that a while ago and that's what we're sticking with now. Um, and then we write the name of the ink in a glass pen because glass pens are easy to clean. <laughs> that's honestly the reason why. And then um, we completely saturate a Q-tip and then just do one single very kind of intentional swab to create that swab that you see on our site. So we use that swab for the individual like ink sample swabs. We also use it for um, the bottle and swab composite image that we do. So um, it's really not that big of a swab. The actual, the actual large swab that you're referring to is about this size. It's, it's, it's really actually smaller than what you're seeing here on this word card in, in actuality. So it's, it's a very small swab. So doing one intentional Q-tip swab is plenty. And the reason that we completely saturate that Q-tip with um, the ink is because that's the only like absolute kind of like um, standardization that we can have for a Q-tip swab. Because it is very kind of subjective and, and whatnot. Um, but we use cotton Q-tip swabs and, and um, completely saturate them, leave them in there for like 10 seconds in the ink. So it's absolutely saturated pull it out and then do the swab. So you can see it starts out especially really heavy and then it gets kind of lighter. So you get to see a little bit of kind of the variation depending on the saturation and stuff. Um, and then that's, it's at least standardized that way in terms of being completely saturated. So um, then once it's done, we let it dry obviously, and then scan it into the computer, color adjust it, um, looking at the monitor uh, versus what's actually on the swab, trying to compare the two with a consistent light source and everything and then make sure that it looks in digital form like what you see in real life on the swab because that's one thing that really is a, a, probably one of the most important steps in the whole process because some inks, especially when you scan them in and oh boy, they just look so different in digital form than it does in real life. So if you you probably noticed you've ever taken a picture of an ink with your cell phone or something like that, sometimes it's just like, oh, this doesn't look at all what it does like in real life. Part of that is just digitally, you're just, your, your digital representation of what you're able to visually display is not the same, it's not as, as broad as what your eyes can pick up in real life. So you will never, well at least with the current technology that we have, you will never be able to see the full spectrum of color on a digital screen as what you would see in real life. Now maybe technology will get there one day, it's very possible, it probably will eventually, but as of right now, we're always a bit limited so we have to do that color adjustment. And then once it's scanned in, we can blow it up. We can use it for kind of whatever we want. So that's, that's our process. <laughs>